Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see the current affairs of 11th July 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see first topic. So before seeing this first topic, so for yesterday's question regarding the death of one tribal woman in MP, she belongs to Sahaja tribe. So I asked one question regarding what is the course of action that you are going to take if you are district collector or district magistrate of that so and so area. So for that question, so the best answer given by baby turtle. Okay. So now let us try to see first topic here it is regarding impact of diabetes medicine sitagliptin going out of patent. So here you need to know about two important aspects here. So first one it is regarding what is a patent and next one here is about sitagliptin. And one more dimension that you have to focus on even diabetes mellitus DM. So what is this patent? Patent is nothing but license. So in India especially if any company or if anything which we are going for the new thing okay invention of new things yes we can apply for the patent that will come under this IPR intellectual property rights. And in India, so patent which is mainly given for the time period of 20 years. For the time period of 20 years. And actually the sitagliptin patent which is going out. That means I can say the 20 years it is going to be completed. So whenever the patent which is going to complete means other companies they can also manufacture the same product with the different generic names. And next one here is diabetes mellitus. So diabetes mellitus is one of the important condition that I can say. So especially we will be having pancreas. So in this pancreas we have beta cells and alpha cells. So this pancreas which is responsible for releasing of insulin. But in this diabetes mellitus we can see there is a less production of insulin. Okay so this is called as type 1 diabetes mellitus. So in this diabetes mellitus, we will be having different types, type 1, type 2 and gestational diabetes mellitus. So in this type 1 diabetes mellitus, what happened? Our, our cells in this pancreas, they will, they will produce less amount of this insulin. So insulin will be produced in a very less amounts. And in this type 2 diabetes mellitus, so there is no problem with this pancreas. So pancreas will be releasing the normal amount of this insulin but our cells they become resistant to this insulin. So because of this we can see there is high amount or high concentration of glucose in blood. So here diabetes mellitus is also commonly called as sugar. Sugar means nothing but here there is increasing of concentration of glucose in the blood. So this is about here diabetes mellitus and now let us try to understand what is this sitagliptin. So to understand this sitagliptin, so if you are from biology background or pharmacy background or medicine background, you might be knowing about what is a pharmacology. But if you are from arts background and the maths background, so you might feel some difficult regarding understanding of this sitagliptin. So it is nothing but it is mainly going to increase the insulin production in our body. So this drug which is mainly used for increasing of insulin production. So now let us try to understand this topic. So this topic is important from your science and technology point of view which mainly comes under your GS paper 3. And this topic is important from both your prelims and mains. So how it is relevant from our mains. So if you are talking about our mains. So especially there are number of articles in our newspapers, current affairs regarding non-communicable disease. Non-communicable disease. And because of this non-communicable disease, there is increasing of death or mortality which is mainly seen. Okay. So there is increasing of mortality or death. So apart from this increasing of death and more death or mortality, so we are also seeing whenever any person who is entering into this, who is getting this non-communicable disease, for example, like hypertension, diabetes mellitus, kidney disease, liver disease, etc., that will increases the expenses of that so and so family. So whenever the so and so family which cannot meet the expenditure which will be incurred means so that family will be going for especially getting some loans or borrow some money from the money lenders. So because of this that will lead to increasing of 
debt and as well as burden on that so and so family and even that will be leading to the poverty trap poverty trap okay in especially countries like india so why here whenever there is a health concern which happening in that family that will leads to increasing of poverty as you all know that in india out of pocket expenditure is very much high it is more than 65% and recently this year budget which also mainly talked about this out of pocket expenditure so because of this here whenever any family which is getting any health issue means yes they are going to increase their debt and ultimately that will leads to debt trap of that so and so family so this is about some brief background and here you can also get a question regarding this non communicable disease especially the students who are beginners so they might be not knowing about the meaning of this non communicable disease so if you open your science and technology okay in that science and technology syllabus you need to also refer about diseases so in this diseases topic we will be having communicable disease and non communicable disease so communicable disease means so this is a disease which can be easily transmitted from one person to another person so it can be easily transmitted from one person to another person so these are some examples of this communicable disease and what is this non communicable disease so this non communicable disease means so if any so and so person who mainly suffering from this disease so if any other person who is in coming in the contact or sharing food so he will be not getting that disease okay so communicable disease means that can be easily transmitted from one person to another person so what are the examples of this communicable disease yes you might be familiar regarding this communicable disease for example you can talk about recent corona virus this covid 19 and apart from that you can also talk about now monkey pox is also some of the communicable disease but it's very rare okay and even you can talk about cough cold etc there are also communicable diseases so if you see the context so what are whatever the thing that we discussed now that mainly helpful to get the different perspectives for the students who are going to watch this analysis right and now let us go into the topic now so context says that with the diabetes medicine citagriptin going out of patent many pharmaceutical companies they have jumped on the chance to make generic versions of the drug a more likely to bring down the price of the medicine by at least one third so to understand this again you have to know about what is this branded drug and what is this generic drug so to explain the difference i will be taking a basic example that even you and me everyone they might have used with this tablet so you can talk about paracetamol okay so paracetamol it is a drug that is anti pyretic drug anti inflammatory drug and analgesic drug that means this paracetamol which is mainly used to decrease the temperature and even for the pains also we can take this paracetamol tablet so this paracetamol will be available in the different brand names you might know about this dolo 650 colpol etc paracep uh colpol dolo 650 etc so in the different brands we can get this paracetamol so here this name of this dolo colpol that mainly comes from that so and so brand so and so company which is mainly manufacturing this drug in that so and so brand but the this generic name of this dolo here is paracetamol so generic name is nothing but the active pharmaceutical ingredient that is api which is present in that so and so drug or so and so medicine that is called as generic drug so this paracetamol is available in the dolo 650 colpol paracep and even you can get simple paracetamol 600 650 or 500 mg so if you are going for purchasing of this branded drug so the cost will be high compared to that of this generic drug so this branded drugs that can be developed by so and so company so if they are having patent okay so generic drugs cannot be manufactured for the patent drug so after once this patent is completed means yes we can come up with this generic drugs so whenever we are coming up with this generic drugs then what happen the price will be low compared to that of this branded drugs so that is the thing which mainly said in the context so because of this going out of patent of this citagliptin now there is a chance of bring down of this medicine 
cost by at least third that is one third so if you are talking about details regarding this sitagliptin so this sitagliptin it is a blood sugar lowering drug so indirectly it is anti diabetic drug so in this diabetes what happened so there is increasing of this blood sugar level and in this anti diabetic means it is mainly trying to decrease or lower the sugar concentration that is glucose concentration in the blood so it was first in the category called as gliptin okay so we have number of uh, types here sitagliptin okay so number of drugs that we can see under this gliptin category so where here protein called as dpp4 it is mainly restrained by it and it mainly impacts the metabolic system so that pancreas is promoted to increase insulin secretion and regulate the blood sugar level so as i said earlier in this diabetes mellitus from this pancreas there is less amount of insulin production so this drug which is mainly acting on this protein that is dpp4 protein and after this what happened so here whenever this drug which is mainly acting on this protein that will leads to increasing of insulin secretion so whenever there is increasing of insulin means what happen so this insulin will convert glucose into glycogen glucose is converted into glycogen so that such that we cannot see much amount or high concentration of this glucose in the blood okay so this is the how this drug which mainly works so it is a drug of choice which mainly used for treating of this type to diabetes mellitus where body cannot regulate the blood sugar levels because it either does not produce enough insulin or resist so it can be used for both type 1 and as well as type 2 diabetes mellitus and it was even toppled by a new class of drugs that is sglt2 inhibitors okay it will be helpful in the prevention of reabsorption of glucose from the blood which is filtered by the kidneys and thereby reducing the blood sucrose level or blood glucose level so what is the thing which is happening here so this is also was toppled by the new class of drug so in this new class of drug what is happening it is not acting on the increasing of insulin it is not focusing on this increasing of insulin but it is mainly focusing on how to decrease the absorption absorption of this glucose that has been filtered by the kidneys so as you all know kidney it is a one of the important organ in our urinary system okay it mainly helpful in the waste removal from our body so here the blood will be filtered by this kidney so whenever the kidneys are filtering the blood so it will be also it will also separates this glucose right so here this drug which is mainly stop the reabsorption of the glucose which is mainly filtered by kidneys such that it mainly focuses on reducing of gl blood glucose levels so this is about this topic in detail and now let us try to see the next topic it is about national internet exchange of india in short nixi introducing internet exchanges in durgapur okay to improve the quality of internet and broadband service in west bengal and nearby regions so here we need to focus on what is this nixi so this will be important from your governance point of view which mainly comes in the gs paper 2 and now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so this article which is mainly focusing on nixi that is national internet exchange of india so it is mainly introducing internet exchanges okay why it is mainly introducing this internet exchanges so the important aim here is to improve the quality to improve the quality of internet so first one here is to improve the quality of internet and next one here is it want to provide broad band services it want to provide broadband services in the west bengal region so it is the one of the important initiative under mighty ministry of electronics and technology vision 1000 days so you have to remember this vision 1000 days and if you are talking about some facts regarding this nixi it is a not for profit organization under this section 8 of companies act of 2013 as i said earlier it mainly works under the mighty that is ministry of electronics and information technology 
and actually it was set up for pairing of internet service providers isp which mainly stands for internet service providers among themselves to the country and they want to focus on the purpose of re uh, routing of this uh, domestic traffic within the country and actually it is working since 2003 for the spreading this internet technology and even so this exchanges which will mainly help or uh, among is this internet service providers and as well as uh, data networks as well so now let us try to see next topic it is regarding pm gati shakti pm gati shakti so this is the one of the important scheme which mainly announced in our budget so this article will be important from your gs paper to under policies and programs of government okay and you can expect a mains question and even prelims question from this topic for sure so now let us try to see this topic in detail first let us try to see context if you see context it mainly says that in a boost for the central government's gati shakti scheme states are being brought on board for real time project coordination and collective decision making so especially so this pm gati shakti scheme that is gati shakti scheme it is mainly the central government scheme and to provide some boost for this pm gat shakti scheme states they are being brought on the board and they want to come up with especially real time project coordination so they want to come up with real time project coordination now and as well as they are mainly focusing on even collective decision making so here if any scheme is come up by either state government or central government so what is the important factors what are the important factors that are responsible for the success of that scheme so if any scheme that need to become success means especially we need to have proper coordination proper planning proper timely implementation so these are the some things which are mainly talked in this article so what is this pm gat shakti scheme it is a digital platform initiative and this gati shakti which mainly brings together 16 core sector ministries and they will come together and they can coordinate they can come up with planning they can come with implementation of this infrastructure connectivity projects so this gati shakti which is mainly focusing on one more important thing that is infrastructure connectivity projects they are focusing on infrastructure connectivity projects so if you see some details it mainly says that in a meeting with prime minister of india the state chief secretaries unanimously agreed to support and participate in pm gat shakti initiative okay and apart from that they are also focusing on how to reduce time how to reduce the time which is mainly taken to complete this project and they are going to come with a detailed project report as well so actually the process which mainly takes about 16 to 18 months and this scheme which mainly estimates that it could only 5 to 6 months if they if they can do this project if there is proper coordination and real time monitoring okay and proper planning etc and if you are talking about some facts regarding this pm gat shakti so it is a national master plan for multimodal connectivity so we are mainly focusing on connectivity under this scheme and we are focusing on infrastructure so actually it is a master plan for multimodal connectivity and actually pm gat shakti which mainly launched in october 2021 and we are mainly talking about three important things here so we need speed we need power to this infrastructure projects and actually this pm gat shakti which do so by connecting all concerned ministries so there are about 16 ministries including railways and roadways they are mainly come to they are mainly coming together to this one digital platform okay so to this one digital platform they are coming together so while the government has not specified the size of the program in financial terms so it will also subsume rupees 110 lakh crore national infrastructure pipeline as well so already regarding this national infrastructure pipeline so we discuss number of articles okay in our earlier hindu analysis so if we are talking about pillars of this pm gat shakti we are having six pillars and you have to remember that 
So first important one here is we are mainly focusing on comprehensiveness. So this comprehensiveness it mainly includes all existing and planned initiatives of various ministries, departments with one centralized portal. So comprehensiveness means we are coming up with one centralized portal. So in this centralized portal we will be having already existing and as well as planned initiatives and various departments and various ministries they come together. For example, you can talk about Ministry of State Governments like Bharat Mala, Sagar Mala, Udhan, which is mainly related to these airlines. And even one more important thing why I said it is comprehensiveness because it also even covers economic zones. For example, textile clusters, electronic parks, etc. And second important pillar here is prioritization. Second pillar is prioritization. So it will enable different departments to prioritize their projects. Okay. So here 16 departments are coming together. So in these 16 departments, they can put forth their prioritizing areas, their important areas. And this one is optimization. So this optimization that will assist different ministries in planning for projects after identification of certain gaps. So we will first go for identification of certain gaps and later on we need to focus on the plans how to develop okay, those areas and how to decrease these critical gaps. For example, if you are talking about transportation, transportation of any goods, the plan will be helpful in selecting so and so route. Okay, so we will be having some shortcuts. So in some areas, in some roads, we will be having high traffic and in some roads, we will be having less traffic. So if you are going for optimizing before the transportation of goods, then we can know which, which is a route that can be useful or that can be taken in terms of time and cost. Okay, so in this way, optimization is very important. And fourth important pillar is synchronization. Fourth one is synchronization. So this synchronization, this will help in synchronizing activities that is different layers of governance of each department in a holistic manner. And whenever we understand the different layers of governance and each and every department, then what happens so we can ensure proper coordination of work between those departments and as well between those layers. And this one is analytical. So this is the fifth principle. So a fifth pillar. So it will provide the entire data at one place. Okay, we are mainly using this GIS, GIS based spatial planning and we are also focusing on better visibility, okay, better visibility of executive agency. And sixth important pillar here is dynamic. So all ministries and departments, they will now able to visualize review and monitor the progress of uh, cross-sectional projects, cross-sectoral projects. Okay, so in this way, these are the six pillars of this PM Gati Shakti. And next topic, it is about regulation of medical devices. Draft bill suggests separate expert group check on online pharmacies or we can talk about e-pharmacies. So this topic is very important from your GS paper to under polity and you can get both prelims and mains question from this topic. So please try to focus. So now let us try to see context. Union Ministry has released the new draft drug medical devices and cosmetics bill. Okay, here Union Health Ministry came up with this new bill that is new draft drug medical device and cosmetics bill 2022 so why this bill is important because it mainly defines medical device separately and it also makes a provision for the constitution of separate okay separate expert group separate expert group on medical devices so context mainly says that recently New draft drug medical devices and cosmetics bill 2022 which is mainly drafted and this bill which mainly defines medical devices and also talks about separate expert group on medical devices. So if you see some details it mainly says that. So first 
you need to understand what is a sector that is a medical device sector in india and after that we can understand easily regarding this bill what is the purpose of this bill so actually if you are focusing on medical devices so it is one of the essential and as well as integral constituent of indian health sector because especially for prevention for diagnosis for treatment management of medical conditions and management of different diseases illness and disabilities yes we need this medical devices so without no medical device or without proper medical devices we can't ensure safety and security for the people so if you are talking about current market size of medical device sector in india so it is like dollar 11 billion and its share in this global medical device is estimated to 1.5 percentage so globally india's contribution is 1.5 percentage and current market size in india it is like 11 billion dollars it is a very huge amount and the medical devices it is it is mainly used for multi product sector so actually here this medical device it is a multi product sector so we will be having different classification of uh, medical devices for example electronic equipment so to understand this electronic equipment yes for the diagnosis and for the treatment we will be using different equipment for example if you are taking about the kids especially they will be facing some breathing problems whenever there is a winter because of cold cough and as well as asthma like that so they will be using nebulizer so it is also electronic equipment and for the monitoring uh, for the monitoring of heart beat and how heart is functioning so we will be using this electrocardiogram that is ecg and we will be having different diagnostic equipment they are mainly run on electricity that is electronics equipment and we will be having implants for example you can talk about knee implants dental implants like that and as well as consumables and as well as disposables for example you can talk about syringe that can be used only for once and after once the use had happened means we need to throw it off that mainly comes with this disposables like gloves etc and consumables means uh, we can talk about syrups we can talk about uh, tablets etc and ivd reagents surgical instruments so these are some important uh, categories or classifications of this uh, medical devices so here both the drugs and medical devices they are at present regulated by the cdsco that is central drug standard Co- control organization central drug standard control organization that is cdsco so this cdsco it is a central drug authority and this authority which mainly focuses on discharging of functions assigned to the central government under this drugs and cosmetics act okay so we have this drugs and cosmetic acts under which we mainly focus on the different drugs and cosmetics and whether they are following the norms or not so if you are talking about now the key provisions of the bill so this bill which is mainly focusing to replace this drugs and cosmetics act of 1940 okay so first important thing here is so this bill which is mainly focusing to replace this drugs and cosmetics act of 1940 so first one here is first important provision here is so under this bill which is mainly focusing on defining of this medical devices so actually this medical devices as of now or present they are mainly treated as drugs and there is no proper definition for this medical devices and this draft bill which mainly came up with separate definition for this medical devices and even it mainly brings under its ambit of diagnostic equipment okay so the second one here is it is mainly focusing on establishment of this technical advisory board so this bill proposes this medical technical advisory board on the lines of existing drugs technical advisory board so this board which not only include medical professionals but even the technical knowledge people they will be included under this board so this board which also includes the officials of different departments for example atomic energy because especially sometimes we need to use uh, radio isotopes especially for the diagnosis purpose and we need the experts from the department of science and technology and ministry of electronics okay drdo etc so these are some important okay important officials from the different departments they mainly comes under the part of this technical advisory committee and this one is so this bill which also focused on mandatory permission of clinical trials so this bill which also proposes 
compulsory permission of the central licensing authority for clinical trials or clinical investigation of drugs and medical devices and as well it is also focusing on this e pharmacies so the draft bill specifically states that central government must come up with rules to regulate online sale of drugs for online pharmacies to operate in accordance with the license or permission so yes it is also focusing on e pharmacies as well so this is about this topic in detail and now let us move on to next topic so title says the uprising so this article which is mainly focusing on sri lankan crisis and this topic is important from your international relations which mainly comes under your gs paper 2 so recently so there is a very important thing that happened in the sri lanka here here okay so because of this we are seeing the political turmoil which is mainly going on in the sri lanka so what happened there are lot of protests there are ongoing in sri lanka against the fall okay against the fall in the island nations economic fortune okay now because of this uh, protest which are mainly seeing that that led to the fall of the government and even we are seeing this a political instability that is increasing in the sri lanka so what happened so understand the events so president got by rajapaksha and his secret secretariat was overturned by thousands of people and later on his official residence was also occupied by the protesters so this is about the president of sri lanka and is when if you are talking about prime minister so prime minister whose private residence was set ablaze that means set a fire okay and they mainly have been expressed that they are ready to resign to their post so the boiling over the people anger mainly because of dissatisfaction so people they are not at all satisfied with the policies of the government okay because they are facing day to day problems there is no proper food there is high inflation okay that is mainly seen in the sri lanka so despite the arrival of some overseas aid so even though here recently sri lanka which mainly approached this imf to get the loans okay to further maintain the balance of payment crisis so even though recently here sri lankan government which mainly approached or arrived to this uh, overseas aid and commencement of the process uh, for an international monetary fund bailout as well so even though there are number of steps that mainly taken by the government so there is no there is no uh, satisfaction or relief in the people especially who are poor and as well as most vulnerable so the next few days are crucial for the country as it will show whether the political class can rise above its differences and put in place a alternative regime or not so that till now there is no clarity regarding who are going to make the government so under the country's constitution that is not our indian constitution but that is under sri lankan constitution so under the sri lankan constitution the prime minister and then the speaker of parliament they are in line to act as president okay if the highest office which mainly falls vacant so if at all the highest office which mainly falls a vacant here under the constitution of sri lanka so prime minister and then speaker of parliament they are in line to act as a president so here the way out it mainly seems to be like so here the current speaker he need to takes over as president so that within this 13 days of time the parliament can reelect or can elect the new president by a secret ballot system so here author who mainly says that if there is any delay in creating the conditions for the emergence okay conditions for the emergence of an alternative that may not go down well with public and may lead to more unsavory incidents okay so whenever there is any delay which is happening means that will leads to more unsavory incidents so however it is always better that better that a formal process is set is set in the motion to effect uh, to effectuate change okay so here we always want we always will go to this formal process rather than that of informal process that will help to increase the trust among the people as well so this article finally says that in this troubled times we cannot go for fresh elections so we cannot go without leadership so there is a need for uh, the speaker should act as a president and within 30 days of time they can go for elections so this is about this topic and now let's try to see next topic it is regarding the road to productivity so this article which is mainly talking about especially in the urban areas 
we are facing one important challenge here is there is increasing of commute time so what is this commute time so from house of mine to reach office so it will take a lot of time so this time which is mainly mainly required to travel from home to the working area that is called as commute time so this article which is mainly focusing on this commute time so commute time which is very much high especially in the urban areas and there is also one case study which is mainly given regarding this karnataka so we are going to discuss all these things in detail so first let us try to see the context so if you see context that is because of this covid 19 pandemic so it mainly taught us how cities are important because cities are the important engines of growth that i can say so one important reason here is we are mainly progressing towards 5 trillion dollar economy okay but because of this pandemic induced lockdown yes there is some impact that is mainly seen in this macroeconomic growth targets of a country so if we are talking about travel time so one aspect of cities that we know that very very little about so which contributes to their economic productivity so if you are talking about economic productivity i am not talking about economic productivity at the state level or national level but here i am focusing on individual level so please keep it in your mind i am talking about individual level so one aspect of cities what we know very little about here is so what it is contributing for this economic productivity so if for that question i can say answer here is commute time is very important so commute time for the labor force to work plays a uh, plays an uh, plays an important role okay in determining the productivity so if we're talking about especially economic productivity so if if you are taking just half an hour to reach your workplace then what happened the efficiency of the work will be high so if it takes like two hours or two and a half hours to reach the workplace means two and a half hours for the going and two and a half hours for the return that means about five hours you will be you will be wasting the time in the journey itself so that the economic productivity will be decreased so here if you're talking about economic productivity yes we need to focus on this commute time commute time for the labor force to work to the workplace which mainly plays a very important role in determining their productivity and the travel time to work was the one of the slowest in our cities in 2016 okay so the try here this article which mainly is talking about the traveling time the traveling time to work was one of the lowest in our way in our cities in 2016 but if you see in bangalore it is one of the slowest that is 22 kilometers per hour and delhi it is like 25 kilometers per hour and chennai it is a very much highest that is 33 kilometers per hour so travel time which mainly continues to be long in our post pandemic cities because they are also having some issues regarding the uh, regarding the roads on the roads we can see there is a problem of potholes okay because of this heavy rains again this mainly made a big challenge for the people to travel so the longer the commute time in the city here here what happens that will mainly having the some impact negative impact on the labor market so here here we need short commute time short commute time is always desirable and not only from the micro perspective of this commuter okay but even regarding the health regarding the productivity also so it is having some positive impact so if we're talking about the case study here a study which mainly found that within 45 minutes of commute to the public transmit transit so we will be having access to only 66,427 jobs okay it is mainly seen in this phonex metropolitan area in us and if you are copying if you are uh, uh, comparing with this uh, philadelphia metropolitan area if you are comparing with this philadelphia metropolitan area so within this 45 minutes of this commute time so we can access about 2 lakhs uh, 2724 jobs so in this way here i can say the philadelphia's effective labor market is bigger than competitor of this phoenix okay so this is about this topic and if you're talking about what is the need what can be the some solutions what is the way forward so one way here is we need to focus on this urban local bodies so these urban local bodies they have direct impact on the city's in our economic output etc 
So in the recent research, it mainly says that in case of Karnataka cities, they mainly found the road length has a positive effect on the city's tax base. So whenever you are having proper uh, roads, then automatically the taxes will be increased. So this is because the road which mainly leads to easy access to the jobs and as well as easy access to the, uh, to the jobs and even they can have some increased economic activity so that people they will be having more confidence and as well as motivation to pay the taxes such that the state can also get the proper income. And this one here is uh, when, whenever there is every one kilometer of increase in the road, okay, road length of urban local bodies. So there is an increasing of urban local bodies. Okay, there will be an increase in this urban local bodies own revenues by roughly 430 per capita, okay, 430 rupees per capita. So this is the importance of this uh, road safety. So here what can be done? So cities, they should not view investment, okay, they should not view investment in the road networks as expenditure. Rather than it will mainly helpful for the returns, great returns will be there. So we can focus on improving of infrastructure and as well as public services, etc. So here the, we can do some simple, simple things like we can fix the spot holes or puddles on the roads. And what is the significance of this move? So whenever we are mainly investing in the roads, that will not only reduce the traveling time, but even it mainly enlarges effective road markets as well. It will also improve the access to the schooling for uh, schooling for the children as well. So whenever there are proper roads, means here parents they can go to the workplace easily, and even for the children also it is very very useful. And in this way here, whenever we are focusing on improving improving this uh, road safety, and at least we are when we are pit, when we are uh, mainly coming up with a with resolving of this issue of the spot holes etc then that will be helpful to achieve our dream of dollar five trillion economy okay and even we are also helpful it, it will be also helpful for the improvement in the human well-being as well so it will be helpful for human well-being and also it will be helpful for achieving our target that is dollar five trillion economy so this is about this topic and let me know your opinion regarding this. So, if you are if you are appointed as a uh, CDO, okay, Chief Development Officer in that so and so area, I means so what are the steps that you are going to take in that so and so area where they are facing the problem regarding this longer commute time? So, let me know in the comment box. So, here the student who are going to give the best comment, so their name will be announced in the tomorrow's lecture. So now let us try to see the next topic it is regarding this TTP. So this topic is very important from your GS paper 2 point of view. So if you see context it mainly says that on June 29th Mufti Noor Wali Masood actually he is the chief of this TTP Tehrik I Taliban Pakistan and during one interview on YouTube he said that group would not back down from its primary demand. So what is the demand of this group? It is mainly focusing on merger of this federally administrated tribal areas with the Khyber Pakutwana, okay, Pakutwa province in 2018. And this statement which mainly come in, comes amid ongoing negotiation between the government of Pakistan and its TTP in Kabul. So on June 2nd, the TTP announced an indefinite ceasefire. Okay given the substantial progress made in the talks with the government during the round of meeting. And if you are talking about details of this TTP, which has been the one of the Pakistan deadliest military organizations. So here, here you have to remember, TTP it is the Pakistan's one of the deadliest, one of the deadliest military organization, militant organization. It is not military, it is militant. Okay, So it is a Pakistan's deadliest militant organizations. And it mainly came into picture in 2007. So over a decade, the group terrorized the country with horrific attacks. For example, 2014 massacre in Peshwar. And in this event, that mainly killed about 150 people. And while Pakistan security forces, they had severely curtailed this TTP's ability to launch attacks by 2016. And here, one more thing here is this TTP lethality which mainly remains low and renewed attacks and resurgence of this Afghan Taliban in Afghanistan 
okay that could potentially revert list so now the cause of concern here is so after once taliban took the control over this afghanistan so with the help of this taliban so this group which may revitalize and even if you see in this afghanistan so after us uh, military which mainly draw back from this uh, or uh, draw down its troops from this afghanistan and that mainly led to even the continuous indo pakistan tensions along the line of control so we need to understand what are the motivation of this ttp and we need to go for proper measures that need to be taken and if you are talking about yesterday's questions the first question is regarding amaravati school of art so first statement here is amaravati school school of art and architecture was indigenous yes amaravati school developed under the patronage of shatavahanas of ap this and sculptures they were carved out of red sandstone but they were carved out from white marble so your answer of this question is here is two that is three only because it is asking the not correct statements and the next question is regarding buddhist rock cut architecture so vihara is a shrine with a votive stupa placed in the center chaityas is primarily the rock uh, cut of rocks where the residence of monks monks here vihara is a residence halls and chaityas is a prayer halls so these two are incorrect so correct answer will be four neither one not two and today's question is the first one it is regarding ashoka's policy of dhamma and second question is regarding jainism so please try to read these two questions and let me know the answer in the comment box and this is about our today hindu analysis and i discuss some important topics that appeared in the news and one more thing i want to say here is we in rathor size we came up with this foundational course for 2023 and 2024 and this course is very very beneficial because we are providing more than 600 hours 600 hours of video classes and here one more important thing that you can see is we are mainly focusing on conceptual clarity so conceptual clarity is very important to clear your prelims and as well as mains okay so this course is very important and very useful so try to use uh, use this opportunity actually we are providing this course with an offer price now you can get within 49000 with a validity of 2 years and this course will also includes one year prelims test series and as well as one year mains answer writing course for free okay so if you have any queries regarding the courses so please call me on this number 8074765513 okay now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so this is our today's hindu date is 11th july and this is delhi edition so first article it is regard no resolution to the sri lankan crisis so here i already i discussed this topic and you can easily go through this and there is one article which is important that is start up brace for a long and bitter winter so this article is mainly talking about there is no proper uh, no, there is no proper uh, i can say investments okay so here this article which is mainly talking about there is no proper funding for this startups because many countries earlier they used to invest in india they are also facing global macro economic factors so because of this here startup ecosystem in india is bracing itself a long and bitter winter okay and it is also led to decreasing of potential of the startups as well and now let us move on and leave the city page there is nothing much important and in the states page you can see villagers still against solar plants protects kejri trees so actually this article which is mainly talking about protection of trees that is we can see like uh, anti deforestation movement so it is one of the important movement we can see so we can also add one example for this chipko movement so at that time the tribal people they mainly hug the trees to save the trees so in the same way here the people in this uh, western rajasthan so they are mainly going for protest mainly they want to stop stop a uh, removing of trees that is kejri trees so here the proposed installation of this eight solar power plants in jodhpur district so it is mainly linked to major confrontation with the bishnoi activist and they are mainly protesting against the felling of kejri trees okay so this topic you can refer one so this is very important and if you move forward here you can see intense rain leads to rising of water level in edukki reservoir so here 
this Kerala which is mainly susceptible for the floods ok. So, here because of this especially we need to go for monitoring of a river. So, whether it is crossing the dangerous limit or not ok. So, this is the important topic and here if there is a continuous increasing of uh, water if there is a continuous increasing of this water level in this reservoir that will also lead to the floods. Ok, so at that time, so now we need to talk about what are the measures that can be taken, ok, to decrease the impact of flood, that is preventive measures that we need to focus here. And if you move on to this editorial page, page number 6, I discussed about this Sri Lanka topic, right, and I also discussed about, I discussed about this Sri Lanka topic and I also made a note regarding this Sri Lankan crisis. And in yesterday's lecture, I discussed about this uh, Shinjo Abe and there is one article regarding this Ayurveda. So, you can also go through that once. And if you move forward here, I discussed about this road to productivity article. And if you come down in this text and context, so there is one article regarding section 69A of IIT Act. So, you have to refer this article. So, it is very important. And regarding this Pakistan and TTP, I discussed this topic. And if you move on to this news page, there is one article regarding 20 bed army medical facility at Galwan region. So, this is one of the important steps that we can see, okay, for the production of our, our jawans. And if you move forward, here in this 11th page, there is nothing much important. And this 12th page, here zone area of paddy rises marginally. So, actually here if you see the area which mainly sown with the paddy which mainly rose marginally when we are comparing with that of the previous week. But if you are talking about the last year it is like 23.95 percentage less. Okay, you have to know about what are the important conditions it is required for the growing of this paddy or rice that is very important. And you can talk about even oil seed cultivation here. And next topic is about IITK setting up air quality sensors. So, here we are mainly going for measurement of air pollution in the rural India. So, because of this IIT Kanpur which mainly embarking uh, about dollar 2.5 million project and they are going for installing of about 1400 sensors in the rural blocks of Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. So, as you all know we are mainly focusing on this air pollution right. So, here air pollution in India which is mainly uh, framed as an urban blight through the causes of pollution and even biomass burning and stubble burning etc. here. So, in this context we also came up with this national clean air program in 2019 and we are mainly focusing on reducing of this particulate matter air pollution by 20 to 30 percentage by 2024 and the important aim it is to like uh, 122 cities they have been categorized as India's most polluted cities and we are taking number of measures mainly to address this issue ok. So, it is one of the important step that I can say and if you move forward in this world page here you can see BRICS media groups look to boost synergy. So, this article is important and these are the some important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. So, I hope you enjoyed this lecture. So, by this I am concluding. So, please try to subscribe to this Rathor Science Academy and don't forget to share my videos in telegram channels or telegram groups or whatsapp groups etc. So, where it will be beneficial for the other aspirants as well. So, by this I am concluding. Thank you so much.